Today, Judy will begin a survey of Brooksby, an agricultural college which is also a commercial farm with a wide range of activities. Looking forward to seeing your set up here. Okay, if you'd like to get in. Okay, thanks. So, first one's across the road. Yes, and then uh, we can go on from there to the dairy unit. It's amazing to think that this land that Brooksby now farms has been enclosed for over 500 years and sheep have grazed the parkland. And, and yet of that 500 years, there's been more change in the last 50 than the previous 450. Going down the farm drive, one of the first things that's immediately apparent, of course, is um, overhead high tension cables. Farms very often have something like 11,000 volts coming into them. Cables are quite low, and there's the potential for impact with machinery and the cables, which can have disastrous effects. Um, getting onto the farm itself, the immediate housekeeping. I'm looking to see how tidy the farm is. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any containers lying around, any plastics lying around, if the fuel stores are bunded, or if they even need to be bunded because of the proximity to a water course. And that will give me an immediate impression of the sort of management and safety management we have on site. Special care must also be taken of chemicals, which can be hazardous to the health and safety of workers and potentially harmful to the wider environment as well. Okay. Well, the first thing here, Andrew, I'd be looking at doing would be replacing this door or fitting a locking bar. You've got an ordinary mortise lock, and it's quite easily kicked in if anyone had the mind. And a steel face door, um, five lever mortise lock, or a locking bar going across the front of it to prevent and repel all invaders, I think is perhaps a good idea. The regulations demand containment in case of spillage. And I'd ask for across the bottom of that door that the breeze blocks be built up. It, yes, it may seem yeah. to create a trip hazard, but in fact it's containing the pesticides yeah, and it's yeah. the lesser, once again, of two evils that we're looking at. And the regulations say that the containment must yeah. be 110% of the substances that stored, the volume mm. of the substances that stored in here. So that needs to go on. You've got to crack across the floor. I don't know what's caused that. Well, the, the floor was sealed, but it's obviously the, the ceiling's um, worn out and uh, you can see around the edge of the wall that the, the, the sealant is still in place and it's just a matter of resealing the floor, which will seal the cracks as well. Yeah, as long as the resealing of the floor actually seals the cracks, you know, that's the main thing. A couple of other little points. You've got up here, you've got some high-level storage yes. and mm. there's two things that can happen. Someone's either going to stand on a chair and fall off it as yeah. they're trying to get mm. into it, or they're going to pull the whole lot down on top of themselves as yeah. they go like that. And as you do the work to upgrade the chemical store, I'd suggest that you try and bring as much down to yes. as low a level mm. as you possibly can. Um, everything else is fine, but I see you've got the age-old problem of disposal of containers. Yes, yeah, so the metal containers are a particular problem. Um, as you can appreciate, and uh, our policy with those is to crush them and bury them on uh, an improved site uh, away from any watercourses, and that's, that's what we're doing at the moment. Yeah, I think it's about the only thing you can do with them, because no-one else really wants them. And over here, of course, you've got some plastic containers, and what are you doing with those at the moment? Well, at the moment, I um, hesitate to say that we're actually burning them, but from an environmental point of view, we're open to any suggestions for recycling them. Yeah, it's not just from an environmental point of view, because you can get toxic fumes coming off, mm. of course, even how, however well you rinse them. Um, there's some of the agrochemical suppliers now are offering a recycling service. They'll actually come and collect them, and they re recycle the bottles. Now, these people are few and far between, and there's work being done, now, done on that at the moment, and I think that's no bad thing. Right, so if we go across now and have a look at your silage, what have we got here? Oh, these are the silage additive containers, and we use different additives on our silage nowadays, and, uh, and we use these big containers to avoid manual handling and having to touch the chemicals. The other thing about manual handling, of course, we've now got the big bale. That's right, they've taken over from small bales years ago, throwing them on with a pitchfork. Now it's all done from a tractor seat, so it's, it's a lot easier and a lot more efficient use of labour.
certainly a lot of saving on your back as well. I remember the days on the bale sledge and not much fun. No. Creaking yeah. joints and everything. So, of course, we've got silage here, and presumably with this already being put down, it's got to be grass silage. Yeah, it's grass silage made at the end of June. And it's had the acid put into it? Yes, we, we put an acid additive onto it and then cover it with black plastic and the tyres, as you can see, to seal yep. it and stop the air getting in. But while silage is stored, it can produce waste. This runoff is a pollutant and has to be collected in special tanks separately drained from rainwater. If the silage runoff entered any streams which fed water supplies, it could have a wide environmental impact on the general public. OK, so you, you've got the runoff, and obviously you want to avoid the risk of pollution. Um, what are you doing about that? Well, what we do is we wilt the grass in the field. Uh, we're aiming to get silage of 30% dry matter, mm -hmm. and that obviously reduces the, the risk of pollution. As okay. you can see, this is a purpose-built ball pen and yeah. our old bull here. But having said that, you can never be too careful because last year we hired a bull that actually managed to clear over the top of this and was away. So uh, it's important to always be uh, wary of any bull. Well, you could have made some money entering it for the Grand National. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> The cows themselves, to the farmer, are machines that process food into milk. The quantities are remarkable. On average, one cow produces about 40 pints of milk every day. The milk is carefully stored until it can be collected by tanker. Milk is taken from a number of local farms to the nearby town of Melton Mowbray, where it is used to make Stilton cheese. When we buy cheese or milk or any dairy product, most of us take it for granted that it's going to be safe to consume. That safety begins here. The area must be kept clean, the tanks sterile and through the process of collection, there is careful monitoring of the milk's quality. But milk production on a dairy farm is another process which involves a complex set of risks to the farmer, which must be managed and balanced one against another. One example of balancing hazards and risks with the benefits of carrying out operations is the foot bathing of, of cattle. Uh, the substance used for foot bathing, bathing cattle is formalin, which is obviously a high cost rating. But the balance is that by using an alternative chemical that was safer from a cost point of view, but not as effective, we could be increasing the risk in another area by the, the necessity to carry out additional foot treatments and trimming, which in our experience and from our risk assessments presents a far higher risk. This is just an example of the balance that one has to find with a number of operations.